Hey folks, welcome to Fisher Shop. Today I'm going to be building three different recipe boxes using three different kinds of hardwood, three different kinds of joinery techniques, and implementing three different kinds of accents for each one. So it's going to be a really big project, so I'm going to need to get right into it, but stay tuned because at the end I want you to vote for your favorite one. All right, let's get started. Here are my rough drawn plans and measurements. The first two boxes I'll be making will be for the four by six recipe cards. The measurements for the box that's gonna have mitered joints is pretty straightforward. I'll use half inch material and leave one eighth inch play for the cards and another eighth inch for the saw curve when I cut the box open. When considering the half lap joints, the side walls must be a quarter inch narrower on the front and back edge since they'll be fitting into the rabbit. So to make up for this, I add another half inch. For the 3x5 cards, you'll see that the measurements are just scaled down by 1 inch, and with finger joints, the sides must be wide enough to span the total depth of the box. So with a half inch material, it means adding another inch. Let's go pick out some wood. So the three woods that I chose to go with are mahogany, oak, and poplar. So with the mahogany, I'll use that to make the box with the mitered edges, and oak is going to be used for the half lap, and poplar will be the finger joints. So here I am first uh, planing all these boards down smooth and flat and getting them down to the desired thickness which in this case is going to be half inch. So as you can imagine it takes quite a while um, getting a three quarter inch piece of stock all the way down to half inch running it through the planer uh, but it was my only option. I managed to fill up a couple of these buckets with uh, shavings. Um, but thank God for dust collection. So checking uh, the boards uh, with the calipers uh, every few passes through, I was able to get them all down to um, pretty close to uh, uh, a half inch, at least you know within a few thousandths of an inch. And uh, for this purpose, that was that's just fine. Um, but once they were all at the desired thickness then I was able to take them over to the joiner and flatten one of the edges and uh, one, with one of the edges flat then I can cut them easily on the uh, table saw. Here what I'm doing is I'm actually feeling for the snipe on the boards and trimming that off on the miter saw um, so that that would not be shown or the snipe wouldn't show up in the, the finished product. So setting my table saw fence to the desired width and uh, trimming off the excess from the boards, getting them to exactly where they need to be. And uh, once we trim up all three of the types of boards, then we can uh, move on to the next step. And that next step here is cutting the sides and the fronts and the backs and I thought the easiest way to do that would, would just be using a stop block on my crosscut sled and some of the cuts got a little bit tiny but um, so starting with the poplar I'm setting up the uh, finger joint jig right now so getting the appropriate height and depth set up on the saw blade so it's at the right height using that little key I can offset one of the boards one eighth inch width of the curve and then just as I step the boards over the top of that other little stationary key on the jig and you can cut a finger joint pretty easy and they snap right together and it's always nice when it fits perfectly in this case it was a little tight so once I uh, had that concept proven, I went ahead and continued cutting all the finger joints for all the rest of the sides, the front and the back and left and right side. Gluing them up can be kind of a challenge. I figured I'd, I was going to try just doing them all at once. So it is kind of important to uh, get all that glue inside of there, but Managed to do that and to get that clamped up and moved on to the oak box. So here I am cutting the fronts and the sides and the backs. And since they're both the four by six boxes, I figured, well, let's just do the mahogany one too. Um, so I'm only setting my stop block up once. The mahogany one's gonna be mitered. So here I am setting the 
table saw blade to exactly 45 and get it. There it is. And cutting the miters. So here it is with the um, back at 90 degrees and I'm cutting the lap joints on the oak panels um, and I just did that by adjusting the, the fence. Here's my little shop buddy, <laughs> little puppy cameo. At this point I'm using the crosscut sled to cut the rabbits in both of the mahogany and the oak boxes so that we can drop in the t tops and the bottoms. Um, I did the poplar one a little bit different, so I only did this on the two four by six boxes. But once those are cut, then it was time to start gluing them up. Gluing up the half lap box was actually really easy. Um, it tended to stay true and square all on its own. So, um, Really only, you have to clamp it in one direction, so just uh, threw four clamps on it and called it good, and it was perfectly square. The mitered one, however, was a little bit more difficult, um, as you would imagine. It kind of wants to, um, you know, uh, move all over the place, so I put a couple rubber bands on there to hold it in place for me while I position in a band clamp. And once I got the band clamp in the center and got a little bit of pressure on that, um, that, was, that was all we needed. And that held the box together quite well. Here I am dropping in the top. And it is so satisfying when things just fit in there. Absolutely perfect. So with tops and bottoms in both boxes, it's time to move back to the table saw and cut them in half. So I cut one on the fence, and then I tried the other one, uh, well actually the other two, on the crosscut sled. And you can see how there's you know, some variance there when moving from the sides to the front. So to clean that up, I just duct taped down a piece of sandpaper and went crazy uh, rubbing the tops and the bottoms against it, and that took all of that out. So... Sorry for this. This gets a little bit blurry, but for those mitered edges that don't or that aren't perfect, I just ran a bead of glue and smeared in some sawdust and uh, then sanded it off. And you could not tell it was as if they were perfect. So that's a little tip. Um, so here we are, three boxes in the making. Um, so the boxes are made. Now it's time to start accenting them. So here I am cutting the splines for the oak top. And that spline jig, as you can see, it's, it's pretty simplistic. That's, that's an easy one to put together. Cutting a thin 1 8 inch strip of walnut to be used for the spline. So here I am putting it into the kerf marks for the spline and then tracing out the the shape leaving myself with plenty of extra over to the bandsaw to cut those out and um, using a, a pencil uh, for the cuts that would normally have brought my finger a little too close to the blade um, so that helped and it looks like I cut these out in probably the most <laughs> confusing way I could <laughs> but I cut them out Anyways, uh, over to the assembly table here and gluing up each of these splines and pushing them into place. Here I am uh, cutting out a big spline for uh, the mahogany box. My plan is to do nested splines on here. So this is for the big one and we'll be using bird's eye maple. Um, so it should look pretty cool. And here I am cutting out the bird's eye maple triangles. It's got a nice figure in that wood, doesn't it? Um, so to get them to fit exactly, some of them needed to be touched on the disc sander a few times uh, just so that they would fit. And once I got them in there, I labeled them and then pulled them out and set them aside uh, so that I wouldn't forget which one they were supposed to go into. 
over on assembly here, just uh, gluing those in. And then uh, the oak one, meanwhile, has dried. So I take that over to the disc sander to clean up those splines and sand them smooth. Now this, I'm sorry about the focus here. This is the handle that I made for the mahogany one. And I'm just putting a, a chamfer on the router table on the bottom edge. Um, and you'll get a better look at that here in a little bit. So now the big splines um, have been sanded flush. And now I'm actually cutting the nested splines that are going to go in the middle of those. And uh, I cut those out of Purple Heart and sanding them a little bit smaller so that they can sneak in there. And in the, the ones that were tight, I actually used a clamp to squeeze them in there. And surprisingly, that uh, actually w worked out really well. Um, so to make a handle for the poplar finger-jointed box, what I decided to do was to stick with the theme and continue to use finger joints. So here I am. I grabbed two pieces of poplar stock and finger-jointed them and pushed them together. Oh, that's satisfying. I like that part. <laughs> uh, back at the mahogany one here I am placing that handle on the top and the handle is another piece of bird's eye maple capped with a uh, tiny strip of purple heart I used the same design on the oak one the oak is just a piece of oak capped with walnut though so a little bit different here is the handle that I'll use for the poplar box and I'm going to be cutting that kerf in the um, in the handle itself and what that's for that's for holding the recipe cards you'll see at the end so now it's time to sand and sand and sand and sand so I did a lot of sanding on uh, all three boxes all three lids and then uh, the handles too so it took a while but uh, finally time for finish and I'm using a water-based polyurethane uh, it's quick dry and uh, leaves a gloss finish and it goes on really easy and um, I really like it. Cleanup is super simple, so that really brings out the grain in the mahogany. Love it, and uh, it darkens up the walnut, and it just makes everything beautiful. Look at that poplar. The green in that poplar just uh, really stands out. Love it. Okay, so now all three boxes are finished. Now it's time to put on the hinges. So holding up the hinges, making um, tiny little pencil lines on either side where they're going to be. And then once they're on there, I use a scribe to punch a little hole where the screw should be. And then once I have all four of those holes, I just drive the screw in by hand. Being very careful not to over tighten. I don't want to strip anything. Um, but it all went very well in the end. Now what I did is I sprayed the bottom of the boxes with um, craft adhesive and then stuck it on this felt. And uh, I just figured these recipe boxes would be probably nicer if they had a soft bottom. They could slide around your counter a little bit easier. So trimming off the excess with a uh, utility knife. And I did this for all three boxes. Got the mahogany one and the oak one in one sheet. And then I used um, another one for the poplar. Trimmed that up a little bit differently because it has rounded edges. So I didn't want it to show at the bottom. But here's all three boxes finished complete. Let's look at some pictures here.
Well, that's going to wrap up this project. So, which one's your favorite? Is it the mahogany one with the bird's eye maple and purple heart nested splines? Is it the poplar finger jointed one or the oak with the walnut cap and the walnut splines? I think they all turned out really good, especially since I didn't really have any plans to go off of. I was just kind of winging it. But uh, write in the comments down below which one is your favorite because I'm interested to know. And uh, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and like the video, and we'll see you next time. All right? Take it easy. Uh, it's going to be a huge project, but at <sighs> Hey, folks, welcome to Fisher Shop. Today I'm going to be building three recipe boxes from three different kinds of hardwood using three different joinery techniques and three different accents. Why am I doing this? It's like I'm in a gang. It's like I'm in a gang, so I'm in. What's up, man? Uh, three different kinds of joinery techniques and three different accents. It's going to be a really big part. Well, that's going to wrap up this video. So, which one's your favorite? Which one you like the... I just said that. Why do I say it again? I say it twice. It doesn't make any sense. It's stupid. Well, that's going to wrap these... Uh,